What is going on? Welcome back. Hopefully everybody has been somewhat enjoying their summer, but probably like myself, you're ready to get back into the stand, into the blind, ready probably getting some decoys around, getting everything cleaned up, getting organized. I know that's what we're doing. Probably gonna get the decoys cleaned up and the trail organized here within the next week or so. Believe it or not, goose season here in PA, early season starts up the 1st of September, so hopefully we'll have some good videos coming out for you guys there. But I've been shooting my bow a lot and uh, got this new Matthews V3 set up and I am setting up some new arrows. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to give you guys some tips and tricks that I do when I'm selecting an arrow shaft and just trying to build the best possible setup for my bow and what I'm doing. And a lot of that comes down to building an arrow with a purpose and keeping in mind some crucial aspects to arrow builds um, that I've learned over the years. And I've been blessed enough to shoot competitively with some of the best archers in the world and learn a ton from them. So everything that I'm going to share here is not necessarily my knowledge. This is collective knowledge from a bunch of really, really good guys who were willing to share their info with me when I was new to the competitive archery scene. And uh, hopefully it helps you guys. Uh, I know when I started doing some of this stuff, it absolutely shocked me and I was amazed at what effort would go into building a super consistent, accurate arrow and I want to share that with you. So that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to try to keep it short, but it is a lot of info and it's a lot of talking. So hopefully you could stomach me talking to you for a little bit and I'm going to show you some real world examples here on the arrows that I'm going to be building. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so I had to sit down because this is going to be a doozy. And like I said, I'm going to try to keep it short and to the point and just give you the info you need. But it is going to be a lot of talking. Hopefully, if it's interesting to you, you should learn something, um, especially if you're new to archery. Uh, hopefully, I can give you some info here that's going to make you feel co more comfortable um, picking an arrow. And if you want to try your, your knack at building, uh, I, I highly, highly recommend it, guys. It's not that hard and I find it very relaxing and fun. I enjoy building arrows, um, a lot of guys do. So if you've been thinking about doing it, just do it. Buy a jig, um, I recommend like a Bitsenberger or something along those lines. They're not a lot of money, it'll serve you for a lot of years, um, but it's worth doing. So real quick, I wanna cover the things that I do when selecting an arrow, but that's not really what this video is gonna be about. It's gonna be more on the advanced side and kind of the things that I do to make sure that I can get my arrows real consistent. So the first thing that you're going to want to make sure you have right is your spine selection. And if you're working through a pro shop or anything along those lines, just double check what they're doing and what shaft they want to put you in. Most pro shops are very good. Um, I'm not here to bash pro shops, but I have seen a lot of pro shops put people into the wrong spine shaft and it can cause you a lot of issues, especially if you're underspined um you're gonna have a ton of flight issues and tuning issues so making sure you have that that um spine selection right is crucial but super easy i'm not even sure how it it's wrong but it happens all the time so you're gonna go to the manufacturer's website they're gonna have a spine chart there and you're gonna look at your arrow length and your draw weight and it's gonna put you into a section on that spine chart and from there it's gonna show you what spine you need if you are on the edge of say between a 300 spine and a 340 spine um, i always lean to the heavier because i would just prefer to have a, a heavier spine than a lighter spine especially nowadays with these cam systems they're very aggressive the bows are very fast and typically the bow will eat a heavier spine better than it will a light spine so the spine of that shaft is going to be the stiffness of it and how thick the wall is on that arrow and how well it can handle that poundage and uh, that's what it's all about. So making sure that you have a good correct spine for your draw weight and arrow length is crucial but very easy. So that's all I'm going to talk about on spine. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the next part to selecting a, a good shaft for you and for your setup and like I said this is all about purpose. So our purpose and what my purpose is, uh, is gonna be, you know, killing whitetail deer around 30, 35 yards and under. Uh, if you're gonna be out west and you're gonna be taking 80 yard shots, 
at elk, then everything we're talking about here is gonna be a little more crucial and you could probably err on the higher side of what we're gonna talk about here. But you don't want an arrow shaft that is gonna be too heavy for your setup where you're gonna completely eliminate the performance of the bow. And what I mean by that is every manufacturer has concluded that five grains of arrow weight per pound of draw weight is like the bare minimum. So that would be the fastest arrow setup you could possibly put through your bow would be five grains per pound. Um, so if you're shooting 70 pounds, that would be a minimum arrow weight of 350 grains. What I like to do for my hunting setups is to stay between a 5.5 and 6.5. And that is gonna give you a happy medium between arrow weight and speed. And especially with the new bows, with the speeds that they're getting out of them, you can typically afford to be on the heavier side of that, around six grains per pound. Um, that's typically where I fall. That's where these arrows that I'm building right now are gonna fall. I think they fall at like 6.1 or so. Um, and I'm happy with that. So it's important. And the way you're gonna do this is just mock your arrow build up. Go online, go to the arrow manufacturer's website or Lancaster or wherever you wanna go and just start looking at arrows and you're gonna look at the grains per inch. And that grains per inch is going to be the weight of that arrow for every inch of arrow that you have. So you would take your arrow length and you would multiply that by the grains per inch. So just for simplicity's sake, let's say it's a 10, 10 grain per inch arrow and you're shooting it at 30 inches, that arrow would be 300 grains. And then from there, you're gonna start looking at all your components and everything that you're gonna put on that arrow, you're gonna add into your calculation. And at the end of your calculation, you're gonna have a total arrow weight. So you're gonna include everything, your point weight, your knock weight, your fletching weight, everything. And that's gonna give you the ability to check it against this sweet spot. And it, it helps tremendously, guys, when you are trying to pick an arrow and make sure that you're not getting too heavy, but yet not too light. Most of the time, you're not gonna have an issue with getting too light. You're, you're gonna struggle getting that arrow weight down. So that's what I recommend. Um, you know, the gold tip velocities is what I'm going to be shooting this year. That it's a 300 spine arrow and those arrows are 8.8 .8 grains per inch. And for me, it just works on a 72 pound bow. So I think it's like 72 and a half pounds. Um, it's, it, it just works perfect for me. So that's what you need to do. Look around at different arrows and try to get that arrow weight to fall into that sweet spot that I'm recommending here. I promise you, you will not go wrong falling in between that zone right there. So. Sorry about the train, uh, just so happened to drive by, I guess, while we're doing the video. But the next thing is front of center, and this is not a, this is not something that I dictate my entire build off of. I just try to keep it in a range if I can. And for me, that range is 11-12%. Uh, if I can be front of center 11-12%, I'm happy. And um, with this build, I actually went with, instead of a standard insert at, I think they're 12 or 15 grains, I'm running a 50 grain insert up front. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can afford a little speed. I'm probably still gonna be shooting a 300 foot a second arrow. And uh, I'm gonna have that extra weight up front just to help with that front of center and to help steer that arrow from the front rather than just all fletching. So the last thing I'll say on front of center is if you're gonna be shooting a fixed broadhead at distance, I would try to get your front of center as high as you possibly can because it is gonna matter those broadheads do try to steer the arrow and the more front of center weight you have there to help carry that arrow and keep it stable up front is gonna help you. So that's all I'm really gonna get into on front of center. Like I said, I check it, but it's not a huge, huge concern for me. If I was gonna be hunting out west with fixed broadheads and shooting distance, I would worry about it a little bit more. So the real nitty gritty of this and what I really want to get into on this particular video is going to be weight sorting components. And this is a, this is why I'm advocating to try your knack at building arrows because you are going to be able to build a much more consistent arrow and accurate arrow. And when you're done, I promise you the outcome is probably going to be better than what your pro shop is giving you. And rightfully so. Those guys are doing it for you know, a living. They're trying to get arrows done and built and they just don't have the time to put into them like me or you would. So this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna get all of your components. You're gonna select your arrow shaft. You're gonna get it cut down to length. Um, if you don't have the ability, have your pro shop do it. I highly recommend, this is another tip. Um, 
you can spin them on an arrow spinner and check for straightness and you will see some wobble on probably both ends of the arrow. My recommendation to you is, is trimming a little bit off of your knock end no matter what. And what that does for me is remove a little bit of that wobble and just make sure I have a good clean shaft on both sides. So typically I'll cut off like an inch on my knock side and then I'll cut the rest off on my point side. So just another tip and trick there. But get those arrows cut down and then you're gonna order all your components in and you're gonna wanna probably over order. So typically what I do is if I'm gonna build a dozen arrows, I usually buy 14 shafts because I'm probably gonna destroy one shooting at the target here at some point. And uh, I just like having at least a dozen on hand. So you're gonna get those shafts and uh, you're gonna get all your components bring them, get them all home. And at this point, we are gonna pull out a scale and you're gonna want a pretty accurate scale. You're gonna want something down into a 10th of a grain and you're gonna start weight sorting all of your components and your arrow shafts. And you're gonna start putting them into light and heavy piles. And you're gonna see, and you're gonna find that you are going to have two piles for most components. Now, fletchings are probably one of the worst right there along with field points field points vary quite a bit along with fletchings. So I'm gonna show you um, in the next clip here just how much variation we're gonna have in some of these components. And you know, these are good components. It's all gold tip and I'm shooting AAE fletchings. So AAE is actually, I found some of the more consistent fletchings out there. Some of the other ones are pretty bad when you start weighing them. So. That's really going to be the, the knack to getting a consistent arrow is to start weight sorting all of your components, everything that's going to be on the arrow. And I don't care what it's going to be, whether it's a wrap or an outsert or an insert or knocks or fletchings, all of it is going to get sorted into light and heavy piles. Um, if you find that it's getting split up into three different piles and split them up into three different piles, it's not going to hurt. But this is the key to building super accurate arrows and you're gonna end up having to do this yourself if you want to accomplish this. Um, I don't know if a, even if you asked the pro shop to do it for you, if they would, um, you could always ask, but I would just recommend doing it yourself and you're gonna end up with a super, super consistent arrow. So that's what today's video is really gonna be about. I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you best case, worst case scenario for these shafts and um, what happens when you don't weight sort and you potentially put all of your heavy components on heavy, heavy arrows or on an already heavy shaft and uh, vice versa if you put all your light components on an already light shaft. And I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. You're gonna see variations six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 grains. And that will matter in the uh, end here when you're trying to hit a dot at 40 yards. So stay tuned, that's what's coming up next. All you're gonna do is you're gonna start taking your arrows, you're gonna put them on your scale, um, and weigh them, that's it. So this is gonna be 266.1. That's probably gonna be on the heavier side. This one is gonna be 263.9. So right there you can already see 263.8. You can already tell what I mean by variations in weight. Now, you know, this falls within the spec for the gold tip, these arrows that I'm shooting, I think it's plus or minus two grains. So, you know, that's common, but you're gonna go through each and every arrow and you're gonna start setting them in piles. You'll have a heavy side and a light side or however you wanna sort it, whatever's easier for you, but you're gonna sort it. So that one's 265.8. and you're just gonna keep going through them. Now, like I said, this is gonna go for every component that you have that you're gonna be throwing on an arrow. I don't care if it's an outsert, if it's a wrap, it doesn't matter what it is, your points. Points are honestly one of the worst, uh, they're one of the biggest culprits for variation. They're terrible, some of them. So fletchings, I already have these split up into two groups. Uh, they're falling at like nine, three, nine, four, Nine three, nine three, and then I have a lighter side, which is around nine grains, eight, nine, nine. And you're gonna just keep doing this for everything until you get it sorted out. 
Uh, that's why I, I always overbuy on components. Nine, okay. So then we'll go with point weight here. And I think I have two picked out here that are pretty drastic. So that's 99 grains, that's supposed to be a 100 grain point. And then this one is 100.2. So that's 1.2 grain swing right there in your, in your field point. Now I just had these points laying around. You can obviously get better points. Same thing is gonna go for um, inserts. So you'll see some of these here. These are on the lighter side, I believe. Yeah, so 49.8 for that. And then I have some heavier ones over here. 50.1, 50.2. Well, that changed pretty drastically there. Fifty point one. 49.9. So that's it, you'll go through everything, knocks and all, everything you got, and um, you'll just keep checking them. Knocks are one of the more consistent things component-wise that I find. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take one of our lightest arrows to start with, with nothing on it, and we're gonna add light components to it. So this would be worst case scenario, but not an uncommon scenario, right? So if you're not actually going through and sorting all of your components and arrows, you could very easily put three light veins, a light insert, and um, a light field point on an already light arrow. And I'll show you just how significant this can be when you start adding everything up. All right, so now we're gonna do worst case scenario on our light arrow. So this arrow comes in at 263.9. This was one of the lightest arrows I had in the bunch. And what we're gonna do is just start adding all of our light components to an already light arrow. Gotta get everything piled up on there. I'll add a knock. And right there, you are at 445 flat. Okay, so this is our lightest arrow with our lightest components. So now we're gonna do our heaviest arrow with our heaviest components. So we are at, right off the bat, a 266.1, 266.3 grain arrow. And then we're gonna add a heavy insert and a heavy field point. And then we'll add our fletchings. And you will see that we end up with a 453.5 grain setup. Significant, guys. This is a significant change um, and it will cause significant problems in accuracy, especially at distance. When you start pushing an arrow, the, that kind of variation between two arrows out of the same bow at 60 or 70 or 80 yards, it is going to be a drastic change. Um, your point of impact will change dramatically. So this is the whole reason we do this. So as you can tell guys, it is uh, no joke the, the difference that you can get when you start stacking your heavy components on an already heavy arrow to start out with and vice versa. Um, that change just between those two uh, mock-up builds is enough to drop you probably four or five inches at at 60 yards, maybe more, uh, depending on the bow and the speed and the setup that you have going on. So this is the, the trick and the knack to building accurate arrows and an accurate setup that is gonna perform over all 12 of your arrows. And I know it's, it's, it doesn't happen a lot because 
you know, a lot of guys are getting their arrows built by pro shops. That is not uncommon. I did it for years before I really got into the competitive side of archery and, you know, trying to make sure everything's perfect. So I'm not knocking those pro shop guys. You know, they are, they don't have the time to spend on each individual arrow like me or you. So that's why I'm kind of going over this with you and, and showing you just how dramatic these changes can actually be. And maybe it'll, it'll give you enough incentive to go out and try and build your arrows yourself. Um, it definitely takes more time. I, you know, over buying on some co components, it, it'll cost you a few extra bucks. But in my opinion, it's worth it. You know, we, we spend a lot of money on this sport and obviously we owe it to the animals. We're trying to make good, clean kills and just making everything the best you can possibly make it is vitally important to me. So that's really how I mock up my arrows. Um, from that point on, I would just build it. Now, the, the whole goal to this is to start mix matching um, components and when I say mix, mix matching you're gonna take your heavier components and put them on your lighter arrows and your lighter components on your heavier arrows and what it's gonna do is start evening out the field so what we're gonna do um, I'm gonna put you back down here on the scale and we're gonna we're gonna mock it up as if I was actually gonna put that arrow together and I will show you what I mean by leveling everything out and trying to get everything within you know, two or three grains. You don't want that wild six, seven grain swing between arrows. So we'll get back on the scale and I'll show you how I balance it. All right, guys. So I still have my heavy arrow here. Um, it is 266.1. But what we're gonna do is start mix matching some of our lighter components to our heavier arrow. And we'll see how close we can get these two arrows here. Um, they should come out pretty dang close when we're done, so. These are actually all of the lighter components that I already used. And we'll see what we end up with here. If I can get everything on the scale. I usually put two pieces of tape on the scale to hold everything, but I don't have it on there right now. Okay. So everything's on that scale, except for a knock. So now we got leveled off at 450.6 grains um, on our heavy arrow with our lighter components. So now let's grab our light arrow and add some of our heavier components and we'll see where we end up. So that was 450.6. Take this arrow out of the way. So now we got our lighter arrow at 263.9. We're gonna add a heavier point, a heavier insert, grab these three fletchings, lay them on there, and then we'll grab a knock. Four fifty point nine. 450.8, 450.9. So as you can see, we took two extremes, the same exact shafts, the same exact components, and all we did was flip flop them. We just took the heavy components and put them on the light arrow, and we took the light components and put them on the heavy arrow, and we literally got them within four or five, half a grain. So that is the difference between stacking variation on arrows, and uh, it's pretty important. Pretty important stuff, guys. All right, so hopefully you can see what I mean by mix matching, uh, mixing and matching your light components with your heavier and lighter arrows and uh, how much of a difference it can make. I mean, we we took those that the first test where we did worst case scenario and put all the heavy components on the heavy arrows and all the light components on the light arrows and we were um, six, seven grains difference uh, between the two arrows to where what we just did now where we put the lighter components on the heavier arrow and the heavier components on the lighter arrow and we were able to get them within a half a grain. So that is a huge difference guys and I'm telling you that you will have a more accurate setup and a more accurate bow um, just by doing this. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm not going to go through the actual building of the arrow. There's a ton of really good stuff out there on, on just gluing veins on and gluing inserts in. This was more about setting an arrow up and how to make sure that you're building an accurate arrow. Um, as far as the actual, you know, process of gluing a fletching on, it's pretty simple. There's a lot of good jigs out there. Bits and Burgers is a great one for the money if you're looking for one. Um, so that's really it. I just wanted to cover how I come up and mock up my builds and make sure that I'm getting all my arrows consistent between each other. It's, it's really important. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know and I will catch you on the next one.